Please be seated. Well, it's a great joy for me to be with you today on this Feast of All Saints and your 125th anniversary on East Avenue as a presence in the city. Congratulations on that and be back at four for this celebration. When the British troops under Cornwallis surrendered to the American colonists at Yorktown, legend has it that the British marching band played the world turned upside down. That tune was an English ballad first published in the 1640s as a protest against an act of parliament. Parliament's decision was to ban traditional English Christmas celebrations in favor of solemn church services. An interesting choice by the British band, I think. And whether or not the legend is true, it captures a sense of the magnitude of the occasion when one of the world's most powerful military establishments acknowledged its defeat by a ragtag upstart army and a few French and German friends. Washington noted the significance of the occasion by refusing the British the so-called honors of war, a set of customs and privileges for the defeated army that acknowledged their valor in defeat. On that day in Yorktown, the world witnessed not just the conclusion of a war, but the beginning of a new world order, a new understanding about how wars were to be fought, and a new player on the world stage. And our gospel from Luke this morning captures something similar in the ministry and teaching of Jesus. Jesus, you will recall, proclaimed a new world order in Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That new world order proclaims God's care and concern, even preference for the poor, the hungry, the sorrowful, the marginalized. The old oppressive world order which kept so many from the abundant life God intends now faced a champion of the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed, who proclaimed that God is set against the old order. Now our reading this morning is called the Sermon on the Plain, to distinguish it from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. And where Matthew focuses on the piety of God's kingdom, Jesus in Luke calls his followers to a new way of being, to new behaviors that befit the new world order. Jesus speaks of the great reversal that is coming when the poor will possess the kingdom, the hungry will be filled, the mourners will laugh, the reviled will rejoice. And he warns those who in the old order are rich, full, happy, and honored that a new day is dawning and their fortunes will be reversed. And then he calls all his hearers to a new set of behaviors, to a new way of being in a world turned upside down. Now in that crowd, on that day, there were all sorts of people. Many of them, perhaps most, were the poor and the sick who had come to be healed. For them, Jesus' teaching was secondary. They wanted to be made well, and Luke reports that Jesus healed them. Also present were Jesus' disciples, his followers, and the twelve he had named apostles, for whom the teaching was primary. They wanted to live by that teaching. 
And there were no doubt in the crowd, a few, maybe more than a few, who were hostile to Jesus' teaching, who distrusted this movement of the poor. And Jesus called all of them to behaviors fit for the reign of God. Those behaviors specifically were loving our enemies, praying for them and forgiving them, doing good, turning from violence, giving generously, even sacrificially, and treating one and all as we would wish to be treated. In a world dominated by inherited wealth and power, by stark class differences where a few were comfortable and most were not, Jesus' words were revolutionary. And I suspect we would agree they still are. Now today is All Saints Sunday, the day in the church year when we remember all those living and dead who love the Lord and follow Jesus. Some of the saints are heroes of the faith. And some are role models who have served as examples and guides in the nurturing of our own faith. But most of the faints, saints, saints are just us. People who do our best to follow Jesus. And in this crowd this morning, I suspect there are all sorts Many, perhaps most of us, are just sick and tired of the world as it is. Sick of the pandemic, sick of the wars, sick of the divisions and polarizations. We want nothing more than to be freed from this sad old world. We want God to heal us. And some of us are trying every day to conform our lives more and more the way of Jesus. We're trying to make a difference in the places where we live and even to be models for others. And surely among us there must be a few who are skeptical about all this Jesus stuff and this teaching about a new world order where the poor are lifted up and the mighty are cast down from their thrones. Wherever we are, Whatever we think, Jesus calls all of us to kindness, prayer and forgiveness, goodness, gentleness, generosity, and love. Those are the values. Those are the behaviors of the new world order, of the reign of God. Now, I don't know about your life, but... My life is full of emails and phone messages and text messages. And sometimes I'm afraid to look. I hear the little ding and I ask myself, do I want to look at that? People are so angry. There are so many intractable problems, things that can't be resolved quickly or even at all. Often, I don't quite know what to do. And then I remember this morning's gospel. Sometimes all I can do, maybe the best I can do, is be kind. Maybe even kinder than I want to be to be gentle, to receive what comes in with the spirit of generosity. Maybe I can be generous in my response, maybe even more generous than I want to be. Maybe I can love someone who isn't acting very lovably, who is showing they need to be loved. Maybe I can live in a new way in this tired old world that hasn't got the message yet. That's the invitation of the gospel today. That we can live into a new world in the midst of the old one. Wherever we stand on the issues of today, 
Whatever the circumstances of our lives, rich, poor, left, right, in power, out of power, we're all called, each one of us, to follow Jesus in the practicalities of our daily lives and to let our love, our behavior, show our faith. That's what it means to be members of the reign of God. On this All Saints Day, when we remember and celebrate all those who love the Lord, may we find comfort for our lives. God loves us too. And may we find encouragement to be new people in an old world. May it be so. Amen.